Oh yeah, that's good one. A memoir. Blah, blah, blah. Hello fellow humans and fellow mushrooms. We are inclusive here. Welcome to the Nerdy Fox. I'm Steph and if you're new, welcome to my channel and if you're returning, welcome back. As you can see on the title, I am doing, I already forgot. I am doing the quick to judge a book tag, which originally was created by Book Binge, but I actually saw it on Life is Like a Novel's channel, so I will go ahead and put both those links down below. This is a fun challenge because I am going to be making up my TBR for April this week anyway, and I thought this is a really good tag to do um, just for a little bit of fun. So there's four things you have to do for this challenge. One is pick five to 10 unread books from your TBR shelf. Two is read a paragraph of every book. Three is rank your books based off the first paragraphs. Four, add your highest ranked book to your upcoming TBR and then invite somebody else to do this. So I've picked, I picked three graphic novels. Um, I won't be re like, instead of the first paragraph, basically I'll read the first page of panels just because graphic novels. So I will have three of those and then I have two, four, six, I have seven books. I think all of them are YA actually. Yeah, all of them are YA. Some, I think most of them are fantasy too now that I'm looking at it. Anyway, so I picked those. I will go through each one with you. I will start with the graphic novels just because they're closer. Okay. This is Max Hauntapores uh, by master horror illustrator Richard Corbin. This is based on the works of Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. So it looks like uh, retellings with um, pictures. So I guess I could show you the first couple of pictures, which I kind of really like it. I think that was just an opening page though, so. Okay, so the first story is The Raven. So I'm actually going to do these first two pages because it's actually an intro page. So I think I'll do that. So this looks like a skeleton saying, hello ghoulies, it's your good old uncle Deadgar. Welcome to the haunt of horror. Me and a few friends dug up a few nasty, oh, it's not nasty, tasty, Freudian slip of putrid pleasure we think you'll die for. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it. And then this is The Raven by Richard Corbin. It was cold and lonely. I tried to remedy my boredom by examining Lenore's library of old books, but I couldn't concentrate for more than a sentence or two. My nervous energy finally dissipated and I slumped in my chair. I barely sensed a distinct, vague tickling, a tapping, tap, tap, tap. So that's the first, um, considering it's the only one I like, I'm interested just because this is, you know, famous horror stories, but done in graphic novel style. So I'm, I'm semi interested in this. The next one I have, can you explain to me why comic book shops put all the stuff in bags? These aren't like the comics that are gonna be worth millions of dollars. It's just a graphic novel, it's a trade. Come on, sorry. Rant. The Burning Hotels, a memoir by Thomas Lampton. Okay, the first hotel. Oop, I think I skipped, yes I did. All right, so I'm gonna read the first two pages because there's not much. I dreamt I returned to the town where I was born. I saw vividly the details of familiar streets, but when I turned around, they became blurry. That's actually very enticing because the pictures are like, kind of like geometric style art, which is not my thing, but the words itself actually have me really interested. This is going before the haunt of horror, or the haunt of horror. And then I have, this one was actually suggested by my boss. He said I would really like it, but it is The Last Man, book one, so it's volume one by Brian K. Vaughn. I'm pretty sure these guys are the um, artists. Oh, according to Stephen King, it was the best graphic novel he's ever read. That's saying a lot. All right, 
first panel. Okay, so this is the first like cover picture. Not bad. Okay, so I'll do the first panel here. There's a nice picture. It's probably was the cover of the original comic. Okay, something's wrong. Brooklyn, New York now. Please, you have to help me. My little boys are sick. They're throwing up bloody and I think they might, mm, there's nothing I can do. Okay, so as you can see a woman, she's screaming with blood everywhere and the cop saying there's nothing that she can do. What are you talking about? You're supposed to help people. So I'm not sure if you see this, but there's like overlapping bubbles. So I can't necessarily read what's under it. It's too late. It's like this everywhere. All my partner, my husband, all over the city, all over the world maybe. It's the men. All of them are dead. Oh my gosh, do you see that? Well, this is gonna be hard. Um, Cause I'm gonna pick one of the three to put on my TBR for April. The last man sounds interesting, but I'm s today I'm feeling like the burning hotels is what uh, kind of grabbed my eye the most because it's not my normal form of artwork, but I don't know, there's something about the words that were used in those two small, tiny bubbles I really like. So, The Burning Hotels, a memoir by Thomas La uh, Lampian. Lampian? Lampian. It's gonna be on my TBR for April. Okay, now for the real books. I'm just kidding. I was talking to a friend and she was saying how somebody was telling her that graphic novels aren't real books. They are. They are not only word-based forms of storytelling. There are so many different forms of storytelling. So, and because a graphic novel is in book form, <laughs> it is considered a book. And so are comics. They are also reading. Okay, first one I'm picking up is, the first one I'm picking up is Chantress by Amy Butler Greenfield. Before the chapter begins, um, there's like a cute little definition of Chantress. Why do I find it so hard to say that word right now? Chantress, female magician, sorceress, enchantress. Two, a female sh chanter or singer. Like in French, it's chante, so maybe that's why. Anyway, a singing woman, a songstress. That's from the Oxford English Dictionary. Then there are like three little crosses, and it says, a dangerous disease requires a desperate remedy. Attributed to Guy Fox, 1570-1606. I think I'll just read this little bit. I was digging in the garden when I heard it, a strange, wild singing in, on the wind. I sat back on my heels, a carrot dropping from my mud-splattered hands. No one sang here, not on this island. Perhaps I misheard. No, there it was again. A lilting line, distant but clear. It lasted hardly longer than a heartbeat, but it left me certain of one thing. It was more than a gull's cry I heard. It was a song, but who's singing it? I glanced over my shoulder at Nori, hunched over a cabbage bed, a gray fizzle poking out from under her linen cap. As far as I knew, she was the only other inhabitant of this lonely Atlantic island, but it couldn't have been Nori I had heard. For if there was one rule that my guardian said above all others, it was this one. There must be no singing ever. Sing and the darkness will find you. Okay, that's interesting. It's going in the maybe pile. Next up, Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. I don't even remember what this book is about. The Dragon's Blame. The castle seemed to grow from the cliffs that cup the shoreline. Its jagged peak, I can't read today. Its jagged peaked turrets pierced the rain heavy clouds above. Its windows were gaping mouths and gored out eyes. Between the slate gray cliffs and the smoke gray sky and the churning gray sea and the ghost gray mist, it was a, it was a gray place indeed. It was so thoroughly gray that a traveler who lost his way could be blinded by it, by the overwhelming grayness that permeated everything, erasing vision entirely. Um, going under Chantress, um, did not grab me. I feel like that was very lyrical and my head's just not in the mood for that today. So it's going behind Chantress, probably not. Next up, in Darkling Wood by Emma Carroll. From what I remember, this is kind of like fairy tale -y. 
One, Monday, 11 November. At 3.23 a.m., the hospital calls to say a heart's been found. Put like that, it almost sounds funny, as if someone just discovered it in a rubbish bin or, a door or on a doorstep, like happens in the news sometimes with tiny babies. Except that's not how it is. What they really mean is someone's died. A stranger carrying a donor card has stopped living. It's hard not to think of that person's family and what the hospital had to tell them tonight. Yet without that donor heart, my little brother will stop living too. So for once, I think we're the lucky ones. That's like a very contemporary for what I thought was a fantasy. I'm gonna put it at the same level as Chantress right now. Next up, give the dark my love by Beth Revy. Revis, Revy, I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm killing everybody's name. I have to say, kind of like the cover, <laughs> so I'm, I'm judging it by the cover first. Ooh, it's got pretty map. Who doesn't love a good map at the beginning of a fantasy? Okay, so this actually starts with a prologue and also has a cute little quote. I love you as certain dark things are to be loved in secret between the shadow and the soul. Pablo Neruda, sonnet, um, 17. Sorry, I had to, took me a couple seconds with Roman numerals. Okay, prologue. The warship carried 20 good men and two cannons. Bit of an overkill, isn't it? Captain Pasker said. The sun was his back. Sorry, I really can't read today. The sun was to his back, casting a long imposing shadow over the deck. Captain Pasker was from the mainland. Has sh his ship had accompanied the emperor on the short voyage across the Azure Sea. Okay, I'm already gonna give this a note because I totally was reading and it didn't even go in my brain. So I'm gonna take that as a no. Next up, War Cross by Marie Lu. I think I'm gonna really like this one, but we'll see what the first chapter is. Starting in Manhattan. It's too damn cold of a day to be out on a hunt. I shiver, tug my scarf up higher over my mouth, and wipe a few snowflakes from my lashes. Then I slam my boot down on my electric skateboard. The board is old and used like everything else I own. It's blue paint almost entirely scraped off to reveal the cheap silver plastic underneath. But it's not dead yet, and when I push my heel down harder, it finally responds, jerking me forward as I squeeze between two rows of cars. My bright rainbow dyed hair whips across my face. So I'm actually gonna put this on the top because just the fact she's talking about it being too damn cold, being from Canada, we're finally seeing spring weather, but I don't know, rainbowed hair, electronic skateboard, or was that what it was called? Yeah, electric skateboard. Sounds awesome. I am gonna put this on top. There is a bit of a prejudice. I did really like Marie Lou's Legend series and I think that I'm just gonna really enjoy this. Next up, Splintered by A.G. Howard. That's a very pretty cover. Oh, do you see this? I like. One way ticket to Underland. I've been collecting bugs since I was 10. It was the only way I can stop their whispers. Sticking a pin through the gut of an insect shuts up pretty quick. Some of my victims line the walls and shadow boxes while others get sorted into mason jars and placed on a bookshelf for later use. Crickets, beetles, spiders, bees, and butterflies. I'm not picky. Once they get chatty, they're fair game. <laughs> this is gonna sound really bad. I'm gonna put this on top. It did interest me the first paragraph, but she used purple ink. And I love purple. Purple's my favorite color. She used purple ink. I, okay, she's going up front. I know I was supposed to be judging by the um, first paragraph, but no, she's first just because she picked purple ink. We're gonna make quick judgments today. And last but not least, we have Fable by Adrienne Young. This has been on my Instagram feed like crazy because her sequel just came out. It's really cool because the second book aligns perfectly with this book so you can get her full face. It's really cool. I got this book because book talk and Instagram and a lot of booktubers were talking about it, but also <sighs> I love me a redheaded protagonist. I don't know, I just, I feel connected to them somehow. Oh, we've got a map not as cool as the other one we saw, but I just read the first line and I'm like, yes. That bastard was leaving me again. Between the trees, I could see Koi and the others kicking up sand 
as they pushed off the beach. The skiff slid into the water and I ran faster, my bare feet finding their way over the twisted tree roots and buried rock on, path, on the path. I came through the thicket just in time to see the smirk on Koi's lips as the sail dropped open. It is between these two, but I'm gonna go with this one. She used purple ink. I'm gonna pick this one. So for the decision of this tag, we have The Burning Hotel is a memoir by Thomas Lampion and Splintered by A.G. Howard. These will be on my TBR, which you will see a week from when this gets posted. So there will be more books, but you will also see these on my TBR for April. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give a thumbs up. And if you really like my face, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I post bookish content on Tuesdays, Fridays, and there is always a book review on Sunday. Until next time, bye.